Hey, Ben Lauer at Fixie here, and I'm going to spend a few minutes and go through some code that we just posted, which will show you how to use uh, a Twilio for an incoming phone call answered by an Ultravox agent, but then uh, builds on that by adding additional capabilities for transferring the call, for uh, getting the transcript at the end of the call out to make.com uh, via a webhook how to use cal.com to uh, look up calendar availability, and then also how to do knowledge lookup or RAG. So let's get into this. Uh, first of all, the code is actually out on GitHub alongside a couple other uh, examples that we've had. Uh, so we've had these Twilio incoming and outgoing quick starts. The new one here is this incoming advanced JS, and this just takes the incoming quick start and extends it with these new capabilities. So we can see here uh, what I just mentioned. Uh, we're gonna do knowledge lookup, calendar availability, processing a call transcript, and then transferring the call. I do wanna call out that I built this using a forthcoming service. So back in the day, uh, we had this Fixie platform that has a RAG service, what we call the Corpus service. And we're in the process of bringing that over to Ultravox real time. So if you would like to get access to that, if you have a strong use case for RAG and you don't have something else that you're already using, just go to this Discord thread and uh, you know raise your hand, tell me about your interest, your use case, and uh, we can get you early access. Um, the prerequisites here are the same as the quick start, except we've added the cal.com. So you'll need to have an API key along with an, uh, an event type. You'll need a make.com account with an incoming webhook set up. And then um, if you don't have access to the uh, Ultravox real-time corpus service, uh, you can use any other RAG tool, um, a vector database or whatever. You can just um, substitute that in. There are uh, a number of environment variables that you need to set in a .env file. So you'll need to create that .env file, uh, paste this content in, and populate it with all of your proper keys. And then <clears throat> you can also modify the system prompt. So why don't we take a look at that here? And uh, actually, we'll just get into the code. We'll start here in index.js. This is a pretty basic Express.js application. We've got everything broken out into these different route files. If you're already using port 3000, you'll need to change this. This is uh, just hard coded in here for now. Um, before I get into the uh, call setup, I wanna call out that there is a Ultravox utils file that I created. Um, this, does the uh, actual handshake with the Ultravox API to create the call. Uh, there's also a function in here for getting the uh, call transcript. So this is just using the list messages endpoint here, and then it's uh, iterating through all the messages and then generating a transcript from that. Uh, we'll, we'll look more at that later. And then it also has a function for that corpus lookup for RAG. Uh, so again, you can just substitute in uh, your own service, whatever you're using here. Um, and it should be pretty straightforward. Ultravox-config.js, this is the setup of the call. So we are using ngrok, as it mentions in the readme. So you'll need to run ngrok and then uh, put your URL in here. Uh, this is so that we can run everything locally and then have it um, callable by uh, both Twilio to start the call up, but then also for our tools uh, from Ultravox. We've got a pretty standard, uh, just very basic system prompt here. So feel free to go nuts on this, customize it. We've said uh, Steve's a receptionist at an uh, HVAC company called Acme. We've got information in here about the knowledge lookup tool checking availability, uh, and then also transfer call. So um, we then populate all of the details about those tools here in the selected tools array. We've got check availability, which looks up appointments on the calendar. 
we can see that that lives at slash cal slash check availability. And then there are some parameters. And these are all minimized. Sorry about that. We've got the uh, first name, last name, and phone number. Those are all required. Uh, we've got the transfer call. We've got the same set of dynamic parameters as we just saw above. This one lives at slash Twilio slash transfer call. But we're also adding an automatic parameter in here, which is the call ID. So every time you create a new call with Ultravox, there's a unique call ID that's created. So this automatic parameter will also send that along with the dynamic parameters when the tool call happens. And then finally, we've got uh, a tool in here for knowledge lookup, looking up information about HVAC terms, et cetera, single parameter named query, and that's what the uh, model is gonna then look up. And that's at slash rag slash KB lookup. I wanna point out, you can customize if, if you thought, hey, I want my uh, check availability, I want to get their company name, or I want to get their email address or whatever, you can, you can customize this as you see fit. So then we take those selected tools and we provide those uh, in here when we actually start the call up. So we've set our temperature, the voice, uh, we are using Twilio here for this call. So let's jump into the Twilio file. And uh, I want to call out that I do have a bit of a, a hack here. Um, Twilio has its own unique call IDs called a call SID. Ultravox has a call ID. So I'm just doing a really simple in memory map to just uh, map those two together. Uh, if we were going to roll this out to production, we'd want something more durable there, like a database. Um, so then we've got the first thing that happens is when, when just like in the incoming uh, quick start, we go and give this incoming URL to, to uh, Twilio, phone comes in, it uh, call comes in, we create the call and uh, we're off to the races, right? So we've got our call running at that point. Um, we also have this transfer call endpoint. This is used, um, we actually, uh, or I've told Steve, hey, if somebody gets really angry or if they're ready to book an appointment, transfer the call. So um, all the logic lives here in this transfer active call function. And this is just using Twilio's standard um, API to uh, update the call and transfer it to a different phone number uh, that was provided in the environment variable. Uh, finally, here we've got this thing just for debugging purposes, this slash active dash calls endpoint. That's just uh, so I could hit that during uh, debugging and see what was populated in the map uh, in terms of the, the Twilio call SIDs and then the, uh, the Ultrabox uh, call IDs. Moving on here into the make.js file, this is where we are uh handling a webhook so actually what i want to do is i want to jump back over here for a second to the browser and let's take a look that the, the easiest way for you to create a webhook uh would be to just come here into our docs into the api reference and go to create webhook uh, make sure you've already populated your authorization token, your, your uh, API key there for Ultravox. And then you can simply just paste in the URL that you want Ultravox to post to uh, for those webhooks. Uh, you can specify any secrets here if you want to add some security. And then you can just say, hey, I want to have call started uh, and be good. Or call, you want to add call ended as well. So then anytime those events happen, uh, this would fire. So I've done that and I've created this uh, URL here as my ingrok URL uh, slash make slash webhook. And then uh, if we go back to the code here, we can see that we essentially grab the data in the request body. We check to see if it's a call ended event. I don't want to run this on a call started because the, the transcript won't be there. Uh, and then I call that uh, 
function that we showed earlier in the utils file uh, to get the call transcript. So this is where I pass in the call ID and then I get that transcript. And then I'm just essentially forwarding that on to make.com incoming webhook endpoint. And if we look at that back here in our browser for a second, I've got uh, just to show you what that looks like after I've had some data come in, I can look at the details here, and then you can see we get this uh, object with this transcript added in, and this just has an array of messages. So this allows you to, to pick and choose what messages you want. You can only look at user messages or look at everything together here in sequence. So that's what we've got here. So then uh, if we go back to our code, we'll look at the cal.com. Uh, or sorry, the, the cal.js file. I want to do a shout out here to John George. He joined a hack day recently uh, where we were talking about um, building out some of these things and he was already using cal.com. So this is a link here to some code that he provided. So I've, uh, I've gratuitously stolen his code and I've repurposed it here. Um, John does have an implementation for uh, checking the availability and booking the appointment. I didn't add the booking here just to keep it simple, um, but you can go uh, look more there. But essentially what we do is we have this route that comes in from the tool call and uh, we get the availability, just uh, uh, some some you know formatting here of dates and whatnot, but this essentially just hits the cal.com API and returns back an array of available appointments that then the model or uh, the agent Steve here uh, in this case will then uh, offer up to the user or the caller to see what they want. And then finally in rag.js we have our slash KB lookup endpoint and again that's just using that utility function that I showed earlier uh, in the utils file for corpus lookup. All right so uh, that's a quick walkthrough of the uh, the, the code Hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully you can use some of this uh, to at least experiment. Uh, reach out, let me know if you do something with this. Would love to, to hear more, hear how it goes. Also, if there's other things that you'd like to see us build uh, examples for, uh, reach out on Discord and let us know that as well. Thanks.